bajuta nyile bajuta nyile bajuta nifa bajuta nyile bajuta sek bu eh, kaka ko sumu kan manje buka nak tuku gore ban ne baj ke bare sumu yene tere go diko sumu takati corona virus tate ten tem me nyaaji baj e tikire ne ko ne vaccine yel manje ano san awor na pour mala janga yo bango la tanga fanga fa diko sumu takati covid 19 Bukan waringe se million se jupa e kunga ngar ama pikreti corona virus. Corona virus kwa kanga sumut kanu manje baju tanil baju tanine baju tanifa baju tanine baju tasek. Buk e kanga sumut kanu manje buka nak tuku gore. Ban ne baju ke bare sumu yene tere go diko sumut kati corona virus. Tate ten ten menya di baju e pikire ne ko ne vaccine yel manje ano san awor na pour mala janga yo bango la tanga fanga fa diko sumut kati covid 19. Physiotherapy and rehabilitation clinic is the first of its kind in the Ghana. We have inpatient service. and outpatient services. Yes. And more admits patients and they have intensive rehabilitations. That means treatment three times a day for five days from Mondays to Friday and on Fridays they go to their families to spend time with them to have family. Our patients come on regular appointments probably twice or three times in a week for treatment. We treat patients with arthritis with back pain stroke patients fractures or after fracture operation paralysis of all types and we do treat both young and old patients more physiotherapy gives quality physiotherapy treatments to gambians because we are qualified physios from different parts of the world more physiotherapy and rehabilitation clinic is the first of its kind in the Ghana. We have inpatient service. and outpatient services. Yes. And more admits patients and they have intensive rehabilitations. That means treatment three times a day for five days from Mondays to Friday and on Fridays they go to their families to spend time with them to have family.
mbokay yi nga xamné yi na ngay sétan gambien talents tv séni télé suñu télé télé afrika way télé gambia jamono ji nak ñu ngi ci fi nga xamné nak moy bundikër bu magam ak bi suñu bundikër bu magam ak bi fi moy national assembly member manam pati bo xalaat ci bir dëkk bi té taxawal té bëgg li nga xamné moy gambia fok rek mu am fi place kon nak jamono ji national assembly ba nek ni bi mu nekké ni nak tay ki nga xamné moy president bi mom nak dafa nara waxtan ak gambien ci waxtan ak gambien ci ci anam bo xamné mo nek ku ñepp dégg ko ñu ngi gis different political parties ñom it ñu ngi fi ñu ngi gis ku melni honorable fa bakari tokbom jata gis nañ ko fi gis nañ député mayor bu UDP mom tamit mu ngi fi ki nga xamné moy député mayor bu KMC mu ngi fi ñu ngi fi gis tamit di diploma ko ñom tamit ñu ngi fi ñu ngi fi gis government spokesperson sankaré mom tamit gis nañ ko fi ñu ngi fi gis lot of lot of lot of prominent gambians yo xamné ñu ngi ci biir kër bu mag bi kon nak nu mo tiralé programme bi mo nek président bi dina dugga ci ci biir kër bi su ko défé nak mu daral ay cadeau ko askan bi ñu digg lan la president bi di wax president adam dundu remir ne national assembly bi mo nek place bo xamne mo gëna mag kiko jité nak moy mariam jack dentin jamono ji nak mom mo nek speaker of the house mom mariam jack dentin nak nek na fi ak yeneen national assembly members bu ko défé rek di ñu leen wi dal kéna ku nek di nañ leen wax kéna ku nek ci assembly bi su ko défé yeen nga xamné xamul leen ñu nek ci assembly bi ñu nit ñu wax leen ko ñu fi am honorable kk baro bu united democratic party mom mo nek leader bi bi nga xamne nak mom moy majority leader mom nak mo ngi faxe ko fi nga xamne moy combo south ñu ngi fi am tamit ki nga xamne nak moy honorable samba jallo bu nrp mom nak moy minority leader ba pare tamit nek member of nyamina dankong kong waye it ki nga xamne nak moy honorable mohammed magassi muy independent candidate mom nak mo ngi taxawal ñi nga xamne ñoy ba Uh, Fatou Mato Toumanja est de la PPP Banjo South. Toumanja est de la PPP Banjo South. Parce qu'il est de la PPP National Assembly. Il est de la PPP Banjo South. 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 Mumudu LK Sane, mama ya Deputy Speaker bu National Assembly. Kau nak dapat melihat susu Speaker bini ke jigen, kita hamil mama ya Deputy Mone Kegur, mama nominated member lah tahawal itu bena parti. Nun tahawal mui Gambia, kita hamil nak mui hana regul sengkule. Baji mom nak EPR sila fit togal mom monek member bu funi brevet jamano jinak mom len agis suka de ferek ye nagi tuak di kugis kamera bi dilen wang nyinga ham nyo finek from all sectors du jigen du gur kipa ko ham nerek gig nyo kofi gis gig nyo kofi gis nyo kofi gis tamet ay ministers nyo kofi gis minister bu mel ni honorable amat ba gis nyo kofi di minister of tourism honorable bakari baji minister Minister of Youth and Sports, Nyong Fugis Tamil Kumel Ni Tangara, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nyong Fugis Tamil Badara 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 Juf, Momoy Minister of Higher Education, Nyong Fugis different different ministers, Gis Nyong Minister of Lands, Nyong Minyong and at Saint Piers, Saint Piers in Ekasi Ghana. Why did I get the state of the nation address at Jamano Juju at Jamano G? I forget if I have it. I did I get the time before or last year? Let's say President Mr. Daniel was assembly be feed of that first del 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 at Aynir. Why unfortunately, how much of COVID nineteen me more than Lulu am. Si kau defin lek dengan lentonal, wah len lima hamne mafi am jamano aji. Kau nak asam libang ini, si kau defin lek yang ngenta hello agam bentalan TV, nyu ini len call atas presiden di Dubai.
Amadou Kamara, mon NRP, mon Lafit Togal, mon même pour Nyamina, qui n'a que des honorables Bakari Kamara, mon UDP Lafit Togal, même pour Kiang Central, honorable Demba KM Kamara, mon UDP Lafit Togal, ou mon même pour Iliasala, am Tamit Kinga Hamlana, mon honorable. Kadi Kamara, mon member là, faut fournir bon d'aller. Les gens à Jigeni, Mugelit, Kokonak, Jigen là. À Blen, on est dans ma bias. À Fokrek, ma wah, wah, Jigeni, parce que Jigen, Foko district, Jigen, amne solo, Jigen, amne dole. À la fin, on est dans force président de l'égalité, mon exi. À ce fin, on est dans mon assemblée libre, Jamanoji. Il y a un gars qui est un gambien talent Stevie. À nous, vu qu'ils n'ont pas de rôle, c'est que malo, mon tamet, exi na, nous vu qu'ils different, different people. Nyam tama nyonge exi fumekani na kwa nansi lakini kena parkena amu na amna ai jamani yaham na gisunto nansi lubari wa kena parkena nyonge exi bena bena suka deferek nyota hello mauhlenzi ni namsol na kwa hamuton ate idina lerfi si gambian talents tv dafanya ni speaker of the house wasi di Mariam Jack Adel Lagi tayar mudah kerana ni juga jis orang lagi ag ni kita hamne nyom la gay anal nyom itu juga defaruat bamba honorable momodu kamera momen APR sila fitogal phonei bintang nyom ni am tamat kita hamne mui honorable alusise momnak independent candidate la member for all yundum from neka ni nyingi gis nam si bari nyingi neka independent wa bunyu nyofi ni ena si gai a UDP la ni ena si gai then nyon akiren party wa unfortunately the family then gina party si nga hamne mom la gai neka nyon neka benen party kia hamne nak mo hona rabu fatu Fatu mami exena, fatu minga hamne mami yaga na si asabili bi nyugisko. Jamu naji kama nini kwa wakati regi nyingi sita kwa mimi talents TV na msi exena, hana rubu si ya jata ni na si nono mami nyingi sol linga hamne na kumi gambian flaga, hana rubu hali sio sala, mami kisa bunifu. Wai wili direct, dina ndefni direct, dila nuna na kena par kena. Kini hamu nak mungkin ada bulan madi sisi momonika UDP la represent momonika for Serakunda West. Hanya ada bulan momodo S kamera momnak momojo ke UDP member for Janjang Bure. Kini hamu nak momonika hanya ada bulan Alfu Seni Sisi UDP la mwa represent momnak mungi juge finga hamu nak moi sami kina hamu nak moi hana rubu aliusi se mom GDC la mo represent mom moi juge from Nyamin East mom nak moni kan dau gua hamu mom moni kasi asam beli be jamano G mom mo fu gina neka halle jamano G mom mo fu gina neka halle fisi asam beli Suka deferek ni na sieta na Gambian Talents TV. Kumbi kwa ifara leerek duka def. Ligfunye kani namsi nyugi start the talk bena per bena kuna kanga talk sasa plus. Suka deferek ni kispeti na hamu tamu moi honorable fakeba LM fakeba NL Koli mumna kumne kwa member for. Kiang West, Momo Ganyo, Buya Good Nirek, yenna ko yara haral. Aja na gigen si aja nai. Mom nag National Assembly member la. Mom ida gigen na aduna Buya Good rek. Mom nenfu de falon state funeral Buya Good. Mom nag gigen na adina. This time jamano G fake wudlinga hamne. Moi addressi President B. Beli gigrek hana dobol lamin FM Conte. Mom tamung fee me. Member for Combo is Momnak United Democratic Party Lajugi Honorable Alu S Dabo Momnak 
United Democratic Party la jogi su ko defé rek yene jossé tan télé bi nga xamné nak moy sen télé ñu ñoo léna ina lu len téna ina lu comme ñu ma lañ ko waxé rek dina len wan lepp lo xamné mu ngi fi ci assemblée bi su ko defé nak tay président bi ci yene anam la mo wax xamna na ñu bari ñu ngi spectacle it ñu ngi wax né li la mo wax li la mo wax way dina leer topal len ma rek ma ina len lu len kenn ina lu ma ina len the whole speech bo xamné président bi mom la mo ini su ko defé rek comme nang ko waxé fo melni wut covid 19 ñu ngi try ko am observe li nga xamné na moy social distance ñitti tamit ñu ngi try tamit ko wañé li nga xamné moy ñak sol max kep ko xamné gis nga ko fi ñepp nga sol li nga xamné nak moy seni max kon nak mungok mungok mané ko mungok su ko defé rek xamna ni yeen nga mi ngi ngi setan ñene ya ngi wax nda dina wax ci education system bi nda du wax ci lolo waye comme ni ko waxe rek xam nañ sen nam ci ñu continuer ak ñeneen ñi nga xamne ñom ñu fi nek ak ki nga xamne moom honorable alaji dabo mohammed member for fuladum west mom nak mu ngi represent united democratic party honorable fodi nm drame Mohamed member for Tumalala su ko defé rek comme ni ko waxé Yakumba Djayté Mohamed National Assembly member la fi ci house bi way mom nak bu ngi doon ñew nominated member la fi ñewé ki nga xamné tamit moy honorable Fatou K Djawara mom nak in independent candidate la légui légui représentative de Benin party lu dit independent ignore_time_segment_in_scoring Kondisi as um, the different things that are happening uh, so that net you bari ñu mëna dégga jamono ji yeen ñi nga xamné yi nay sétan rek di nga gis né president bi suy address nation bi ñu bari bari ñu ngi xalaat ci yeen anam la mo ñëwé o lan la mo wax su ko defé rek last year bu ñu ñëwé mu address la na ci agriculture sector bi la na ci education sector bi way la na ci government nam la na ci gambia ñu ko bëggé ñu mu wara démé bu ko défé rek ñu bari 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 ñu xamné ñu ngi sétan ñom du ñak né sen sen xala mu ngi né ñom di bëgg xam lan la président bi di nara wax bu ko défé rek sa su né ñu la mo démé su ko défé rek ñu gis ki nga xamné moy moy président adama baro ci yoyu ñu rek la mo mëna ñëw bi légui rek su ko defé ay yeen ñi nga xamné yi nay sétan ñu ngi gis né different parties amna ño xamné ño wabun ci nam ci amna ño xamné gisa buñ leen fi comme noko gisé rek amna yéna togu yo xamné mu ngi xawa mt jamono ji gisa buñ ñi nga xamné ñom ño fa di nek muy national assembly member ci fum nek president be mu ngi ci biti di def li nga xamné nak moy jël garam jël li nga xamné nak moy odasam bala muy duga ci bir fi nga xamné moy assembly bi honorable fatmata jawara mu ngi nonu ngena sen momet mu ngi tok ci kanam fofu nonu di waxtan ak li nga xamné moy filo nam sami bu ko defé rek dinañ waxtan ak kex sané mi nga xamné assembly bi place am la sa su né kex daf di nek fi ci assembly bi kex mala tala rek lo fok né président bi tay lo la wara address 
Well, come no more for her. The constitutional requirement of the president be at the moment that the forward and you see the day for the moment of what and more like a program a policy. So you are not going to do a little bit. So pay the family in the president will move that money. President will move that money. Constitutional requirement is fulfilling his constitutional requirement as dictated by section 77 of the constitution that the president should come before the national assembly once in the year and address the nation about the programs and the policies and the state of the nation. You know. So this is what the president is doing today precisely. He decided to come uh, this year, uh, at this time of the year. Uh, one will say that you know, best practice requires the president to come earlier than today. Uh, but actually, this is the situation uh, that we have seen that the president uh, is here uh, today to address the nation on his programs and his policies. And we wait and hear from the president what he will tell us with the Gambian people, since we here is the people's representative, all of us are represented by one constituency here, so we hear from the president and we will scrutinize uh, every uh, word of his speech and uh, interrogate it uh, to compare with the realities of the nation, whether actually this is the reality on the ground. So we anticipate to see the president in and from now uh, to enter in the chambers and give us uh, his programs and his policies on the state of the nation. Thank you. You said, "Lan moy policy president be president Adam Barosi yan la mo nyow ko wahak askan be and ta dinan la U S inga hamne mom la amal la askan be nda la lot you you know no asu kada do ra gambe is here for all of us and contribution ni deka be am la tahte party bo halat mungi sibir assembly be party bo halat party bo gidig dis nyepangi tok di khar li nga hamne nak moy state of the nation address by the president his excellency president adam baro president adam baro Nekana Fisi Gambia president for the past years. From Nekani, it's almost getting to five years since Bumnek president Wahid Nuko Deklo. So we're going to hear the whole day. 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 President Excellent from Mekani, so good of a record, Madam. abundant favor of thy servants whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in this land. Let thy blessing descend upon us here in this house assembled. Grant us that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner. Promote thy honor and glory to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this country and of those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. Amen. Please come to the city. Yes, thank you. Thank you. One minute. 
Voilà. Communication from the chair. Thank you very much. Um, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Mubarak. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia. My Lord, the Chief Justice of the Gambia and Justices of the Superior Courts. Honorable members of this August Assembly, Honorable Ministers here in president, present, Your Excellencies, former Vice Presidents of the Republic of the Gambia, Honorable former Speakers of the National Assembly, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Service Chiefs, the Lord Mayors of Banjul and Kanifi Municipality, senior government officials here in present, regional chief executive officers here in present, traditional leaders, venerable religious leaders, distinguished invited guests, the press, all protocols duly and respectfully observed. Good morning to you all and welcome to the National Assembly. Honorable members, in accordance with Section 771 of the 1997 Constitution, His Excellency, Mr. Adam Abaro, President of the Republic of the Gambia, is here today to attend a sitting of this August Assembly and address the current session on the condition of the Gambia the policies of the government and the administration of the state. Therefore, on behalf of both sides of the assembly, and indeed on my own behalf, I welcome warmly His Excellency to the National Assembly. Honorable members, the State of the Nation Address, formerly known as SONA, is a significant event in our parliamentary calendar, as it is an occasion when the chief executive of the state will have direct interaction with the legislature on government's policies and the administration of the state, as well as update the legislature of its legislative agenda. Honorable members, this year will be the fifth state of the nation address of the president to this August assembly since he assumed the presidency. And on that note, once more, I wish to welcome His Excellency, the President to the National Assembly in fulfillment of his constitutional obligations. Your Excellency, thank you very much. And Clark can we proceed. Motion, State of the Nation addressed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia. Um, thank you very much. Um, it is my singular honor and pleasure to invite His Excellency, President Adam Abaro, to deliver his address to the National Assembly. Thank you, sir. First of all, uh, before I proceed, I will want us to stand up and observe one minute silence for the two National Assembly members that we lost during the period.
Madam Speaker, thank you, thank you very much for those few words. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Madam Speaker, my Lord, the Chief Justice, Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, Honorable Cabinet Members, Honorable Members of the National Assembly, Lord Mayor of Banjul, Venerable Religious Leaders, Service Chiefs, Senior Government Officials, Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Members of the Media, Fellow Gambians, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am most thankful to the Almighty God for the unique privilege and honor of addressing the legislative arm of the Republic of the Gambia on the performance of my administration. While it is a constitutional requirement for me as head of state to perform this function officially, I do so once again with commitment and conviction to the universal ideals of democracy, good governance, and the rule of law as contained in the constitution of the country. Today, my address focuses mainly on the critical issues and concerns requiring sustained attention for the development of our dear motherland. However, the significant impact of the pandemic on the government's performance will also feature in my deliberation. On other matters of national interest, the teams are informed by the current national discourse, influenced principally by the people's concerns and development aspirations. The address highlights the need to harness the insightful lessons learned so far for consolidation and planning. The key issues embrace policy program and project intervention, legislative matters affecting this August body, and the needs and expectations of the people. More specifically, they border on critical priorities of our national agenda. The significant accomplishments realized during the 2020-2021 legislative year and the bottlenecks constraining the attainment of the development goals and objectives specified in our National Development Plan 2018 2021. The address covers all sectors comprising the satellite institutions of the various government ministries in the Gambia. A brief submission on each sector now follows, beginning with the finance and economic affairs sector. Finance and economic affairs. Madam Speaker, economic growth in the Gambia has been impressive since 2017, with real GDP averaging 6% up to 2019. In 2020, growth was projected at 6.5%, but the pandemic outbreak compel a revised GDP estimate of minus 1.5%. Despite the economic challenges, domestic resource mobilization in 2020 amounted to an incredible performance of $13.4 billion. 
of this 11.8 billion dollars was tax revenue and 1.8 billion dollars in non-tax revenue. Although the pandemic has shown that the economy is vulnerable to shocks, the government remains committed to initiating sound economic policy management. Along these lines, Cabinet approved the medium-term economic fiscal framework 2021-2025 for fiscal policy interventions. In an order development, my administration, through support from UNDP, Commission and Evaluation of Vision 2020, to make recommendations for a long-term development plan. The assessment will guide future development strategies. Madam Speaker, we have engaged most of our external creditors for debt deferral for at least five years. Most of them have granted us principal repayment deferral, which is estimated to yield $4.8 billion from 2020 to 2024. The savings made will be invested in the economy to create growth. The government also engaged the U20 Debt Service Suspension Initiative, DSSI, and secured relief from ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development. Saudi Fund for Development, Creative Fund for Arab Economic Development, and the People's Republic of China. The DSSI provided relief of $287.24 million in debt service payments for the 2020 fiscal year. Turning to debt management policy and medium term debt strategy 2020-2024 has been designed for an appropriate medium term financing path anchored on costs and risks. Money. Generally, revenue collection fell due to the COVID-19 outbreak. However, grants increased significantly. This came mainly in the form of budget support from development partners, especially the European Union, to, aid, to ease the economic burden of the pandemic on the government. You will recall that the National Assembly approved a supplementary appropriation bill, SAP, of $2.85 billion. The Ministry spent most of the funds to contain the coronavirus. This included stimulus packages for vulnerable governments, procurement of personal protective equipment, PPEs, allowances to help frontline workers, and support to deserving public enterprises and sectors. The government provided relief support of food items amounting to $850 million to the most vulnerable. An additional $224 million was approved thereafter as part of the SAP. Stimulus packages for students abroad, businesses, and the tourism sector were factored in the SAP and paid out accordingly. Madam Speaker, Cabinet has approved a public-private partnership PPP bill that is being reviewed before presentation to the National Assembly for enactment. It is tied to the PPP policy and guidelines for procurement processes in accordance with international standards. Finally, government will table a capital market bill for the consideration of the legislature. The purpose is to establish a stock exchange market 
and the regulatory authority within the central bank. Basic and secondary education, Madam Speaker. The country continues to make impressive gains on enrollment at all levels of the education sector. Gross enrollment rates have improved by 5.2 percentage points at the lower basic level, 2.4 percent at the upper basic level, and 1.6 percent at the senior secondary level. Enrollment for early childhood development is above the National Development Plan NDP target of 50.2 percent and 52.9 percent by 4 percent for male and female enrollment, respectively. Through the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, my government is partnering positively with the World Bank, MRC Holland, and other philanthropists to improve access to quality education. Through such partnerships, 2,173 new classrooms have been completed within these four years, and the plan is to complete 134 more by end December 2021. From 2017 to date, the sector renovated 1,389 additional classrooms and built 2,505 toilets across the country. 100 more toilets will be completed by December 2021. Since teacher motivation and welfare contribute to better performance, 836 rooms for teacher accommodation have been built countrywide. Hopefully, the number will increase to 1,000, noting that 200 are due for completion by end December 2021. It is encouraging to state that the sector registered substantial improvements on the pass rate for the 2020 Gambia Basic Education Certificate Examination and the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. We commend the sector for this and encourage the teachers to strive harder. to motivate its personnel and reward performance. During the year, the sector created new positions in various cadres and effected mass promotions based on merit. Concerning the zero out of school children endeavor, the ministry is working with education above all foundation in Qatar and the office of the first lady to combat the out-of-school phenomenon. Similarly, we continue to put more focus on special needs and inclusive education to attain quality education for all. Higher education, research, science, and technology. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Higher Education Research, science, and technology is pursuing its transformation agenda with view. In this regard, the transformation of the Gambia Technical Training Institute, GDTI, into a University of Applied Science and Technology Research, the upgrading of the Management Development Institute, MDI, into a degree awarding institute, and the integration of Gambia College into the university of the Gambia UTG are in progress. In fact, the administrative process has started for the construction works of the new UCF structures. Overall, access to higher education for Gambians is increasing rapidly. Currently, there are 1,414 students on scholarship at the University of the Gambia UTG. We support 
600 more students in various tertiary education institutions and 734 Gambian students are on scholarship abroad. Madam Speaker, the UDG graduated its first batch of doctoral students in public administration through the Nigerian Technical Assistance Program. It has enrolled two more cohorts of postgraduate students, one of which is a doctoral degree program in law. I am delighted to report the expected completion of the first two lots of the UTG Fraba Banta Campus project this year, 2021. However, the sector is working to mobilize the $22 million US dollars funding gap for the remaining construction works. We hope that the Nemban Skill Center in Fony, West Coast region, will begin operations next academic year to train our youth and equip them with relevant livelihood skills. <laughs> Interior, Madam Speaker, apart from their regular law enforcement core mandate, the Gambia Police Force, GPF, is engaged in infrastructure development, professional advancement, and training. To increase police management and operational capabilities, the formulation of the institutional policies begun in the last quarter of 2020 is progressing steadily. Fittingly also, a code of conduct for the police has been developed and adopted for the anti-crime unit. Furthermore, an arrest and detention procedure manual is in use after its successfully, successful development in collaboration with the Geneva Center for Security Sector Governance. Madam Speaker, the Immigration Department monitors and regulates entry and exit at our border points. Besides issuing relevant identity documents to citizens and residents, despite the pandemic, it is commendable that the department collected 91,980,370 dollars from January to 34th December 2020. On drug control, the National Drug Control Strategy 2019-2023 continues to foster vigilance and action against drug abuse and trafficking. The recent seizures of huge quantities of cocaine and other drugs attest to this. Accordingly, we will continue to support and empower the agency to perform better and prevent the country from becoming a hub for drug trafficking. Lands, the regional governments and religious affairs, Madam Speaker. In 2020, the Department of Community Development strategically focused on emergency response and recovery. This included capacity building and strengthening their decentralized structures to better address conflicts on land and natural resources, as well as operationalize rent recovery mechanism. The initiatives employed include harnessing positive social norms and the environment. In particular, the sector work in partnership with the National Nutrition Agency and the Department of Social Welfare to implement the Social Safety Net project. These are sites, the, 2020, the 2018 2021 Local Climate Adaptive Living Project, funded by the UNDP, is in progress to reduce poverty through green and resilient climate smart related interventions. A focus of this project is creating sustainable and equal employment opportunities with attention on the youth and women. The main objective is to enhance their capacity in food processing handicraft skills, and business enterprise development. Tactically, 
the project targets the North Bank, Lower River, and Central River regions. I have noted with appreciation that the Department of Community Development is working amicably with the Department of Water Resources and the National Assembly to implement the Climate Smart Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Development Project. Honorable members, land rent collection from hoteliers and other industries drop due to the COVID-19 lockdown and travel restrictions. Regretfully, therefore, the 2020 revenue performance for this sector stood at $32,913,776 dollars. A similar trend is unfolding this year. The impact of COVID-19 was so severe on the regional council that central government had to intervene by providing a salary package for them. To, en to enhance decentralization, the Ministry of Lands, Regional Governments and Religious Affairs is building capacity for world development committees on planning and budgeting and equipping them with financial management skills and auditing techniques to ease accountability and transparency. <coughs> this links neatly with the decision of rolling out the IFNIS to area council in order to increase efficiency and effectiveness in physical discipline and transparency. The Land and Survey Directorate updated 416 lease files in 2019 and 424 in 2020. We expect a similar trend by the end of 2021. On physical planning and housing, the Kotu Action Area Plan Physical Survey is 90% complete. The processing of real estate agency applications now takes place at the physical planning headquarters. Similarly, land allocation has reduced drastically with fewer than 5,000 allocations recorded. On legislation, the sector is finalizing the NGO bill for enactment later this year. Fisheries, water resources, and National Assembly matters, Madam Speaker. My administration remains committed to providing access to safe drinking water and releasing timely and accurate weather and climate information. To achieve this, through the support of the African Development Bank, AFDB, the Department of Water Resources will construct and install 1,400 1,404 solar powered pipe water supply systems to provide safe and quality drinking water for additional 400,000 rural residents. With help from the Japanese government, 20 other solar powered pipe water supply systems will be constructed and installed in 2021 to serve 80,000 persons in rural communities. On legislative matters, government will introduce two bills to this August Assembly for a comprehensive water act and to establish a new national water resources management authority. The National Water Resources Council Act 22 of 1979 is still the main legal instrument for water resource management in the Gambia. Because it is outdated, government is reviewing it and will submit for consideration a bill to establish a meteorological authority. Madam Speaker, the fisheries sector is crucial in diversifying the economy. Thus, it is reviewing its policy and regulatory frameworks to effect sustainable reforms. In the meantime, Rehabilitation of the fish ponds in the Jahari layout in Sapu has a production capacity of 10,000 tons of quality fish to mitigate the fish supply deficit in the country. The fish ponds will enhance food and nutritional security in rural communities. Trade industry, regional integration and employment, Madam Speaker. 
Despite the constraints posed by the pandemic, the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment registered significant progress on its priority programs. Key among them is the development of a new medium term plan 2021 to 2025. The Ministry also reviewed and updated the 2007 Labour Act to align it with ILO standards and international best practices. It will submit the bill to the National Assembly for consideration. To strengthen labor administration, the sector equally revised and updated the Injuries Compensation and Factories Act and will submit it to this assembly. Madam Speaker, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to implement the revised labor acts the Ministry of Trade has established an employment service center at the Department of Labor. This is to facilitate linkages between job seekers and employers. The new five years sector strategy plan will help to make the center effective. To promote exports and investment, the Ministry, through GAIPA, successfully developed a new national export strategy 2021-2025. The strategy outlines key priority areas such as agribusiness, fashion, tourism and fisheries for the Gambia to realize its export development aspirations. In addition, the sector through GAIPA issued 18 Special Investment Certificates, SICs, in 2020. These have a combined investment portfolio of 93 million 615,493 US dollars and a combined employment capacity of 824 staff members, of which 279 are women. Under the Sea Trades project reported last year, 12 Sea Trades companies benefited from mini grants receiving combined support of 2.7 million dollars. In order to strengthen trade cooperation and promotion, the sector produced during the year under review an, an AFCTA national implementation strategy to implement the AFCFTA protocol in the country. They also formulated a national regional integration policy and strategy 2020-2025. The two documents focus primarily on production and business expansion for Gambian enterprises. Information and communication, information and communication technology. Madam Speaker, the COVID-19 pandemic has reinforced the need for increased ICT-driven solutions, so much so that the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology has prioritized the rollout of a national technology hub this year. To strengthen cybersecurity and protect the Gambia's cyberspace, the Ministry of Information took the initiative to formulate the cyber crime and data protection and privacy bills. The Ministry will table board before this August assembly once they are finalized. Their enactment will equip the Gambia with the requisite laws to fight cyber crime related offenses. Madam Speaker, in order to maintain a conducive environment for the media, the government accelerated regulatory and policy reforms over the past year. I am glad that the Access to Information Bill 2019 has now been enacted into law. We also look forward to the enactment of the ICT Act Amendment Bill 2020 by this August Assembly. In addition, in 2019, the government tabled the Criminal Court Amendment Bill before this August body. The objective is to repeal all the draconian media laws that my government inherited. <laughs> Madam Speaker, it is delightful to announce that the combined effort to enhance the work of the media and respect media freedoms have earned the Gambia a continuous favorable rating during these four years. The 2021 Global 
press freedom ranking of the Gambia, for example, has improved from nine positions in West Africa to ten in the Sub-Saharan Africa. With the new reforms and the increase in the number of media houses in the country, we now stand at 40 radio stations, six television stations, and numerous outline, out, uh, online outlets. It is evident that the Gambia is in the right direction concerning media freedoms. <laughs> Petroleum and energy, Madam Speaker. The drilling component of far Petronas is now scheduled for 2021. On the other hand, BP announced a significant policy shift of reducing their exploration activities worldwide. My government has reached a settlement with them for their work plan commitments in Block A. Based on this, 30.25 million US dollars has been paid to the government as compensation for not fulfilling their obligation to drill a well as part the Lansing Agreement. BP is expected also to settle the outstanding rental fees and contributions to the training and resource fund. With these settlements from BP, the Block A1 is back on the market for Lansing to interested investors. Madam Speaker, despite the COVID-19 outbreak, the electricity subsector registered tremendous improvements on production capacity. The power rental agreement with car power and the completion of the 11 megawatts Koto expansion project have remarkably boosted NAVEC's ability to operate. Thus, they are now able to meet the peak load demand in the greater Banjul area. Through NAVEC, my government has secured a concessional loan of 22.5 million US dollars from the Indian line of credit for the electricity expansion and rehabilitation project in the Greater Banjul area. Meanwhile, the electricity expansion project was completed and inaugurated in November 2020 in Queenan. It provides electricity to over 80 communities in Kian and the Greater Banjul area earlier in February 2021. The 2020, the 20 megawatts IDB funded project was inaugurated in Birkana. Up country, the entire North Bank region and part of the Lower River region now enjoy stable electricity supply. Also as part of the final phase of the rural electricity expansion project, now it has finally linked the Bansan and Pase subsystems. The recent commissioning of a new 2.7 megawatts engine has centralized supplies in Basse. The capacity that the region now stands above 5 megawatts. To add to the list, under the World Bank supported electricity access project, equally 171 communities will be connected to the network. In the same vein, under the African Development Bank supported project, about 59 rural and peri-urban communities will have access to electricity. In a bid to address the challenges in this sector, now we successfully utilized funds acquired from the Indian line of credit to increase water production and replace 144 kilometers of exhaustive pipes throughout the country. Madam Speaker, in May 2021, I laid the foundation stone to upgrade the Brikama Kotu transmission line from 33 kVA to 225 kVA through the World Bank funded Gambia Electricity Restoration and Modernization Project. Additional financing of 43 million US dollars from the GRNP project is in hand, and a massive data collection exercise is underway with the Gambia Bureau of Statistics. For various, for various operational and transparency, and transparency purposes. On the AFDB Green Mini Grid, the project identified 10 sites in URR for off-grid connectivity. One of the sites, Nyamana, already has ongoing projects. 
Madam Speaker, our national company, GNPC, has happily launched its renewable energy project. The project is aligned with the national renewable energy policy for various services, mainly for rural settlements. To sum up, the national oil company has already acquired about $209,268 from the Unido Jeff 5 project to implement a 455.6 KWP solar system project. All this will make a massive difference in the country. General children and social welfare, Madam Speaker. During the reporting period, the Ministry of Children, Gender, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare initiated several legislative and policy developments. One of them is the Strategic and Investment Plan 2021-2025. Additionally, with support from the African Development Bank, formulation of the Gender Equality and Women Empowerment Policy 2021-2030 is in progress. In partnership with the Directorate of Social Welfare and the Department of Community Development, the National Nutrition Agency is leading the NAFA Quick program to support vulnerable households. Madam Speaker, Honorable Members, supported by UNICEF as part of the COVID-19 response, this ministry assisted 1,000 vulnerable families with children through cash transfers of $1,000 per month for three months. Besides this, the ministry provided 575 vulnerable households in the Greater Banyan area with rice and oil in January of this year. Another important initiative is the Women Enterprise Fund, WEF. This is a flagship project of the National Development Plan 2018-2021, with the objective of strengthening the capacity of 10,000 women and girls in micro, small, medium enterprises, MSMEs. The fund provides low interest credit to women entrepreneurs using a group guarantee micro credit model. The WEF is entirely funded by the government with $8,315,000 already disposed to 103 women group across the country. In August 2021, the Women Enterprise Fund Management Board approved $7,000,000 for 350 women group who are currently undergoing training on entrepreneurship and business management skills. The fund will be disposed to the beneficiaries upon completion of the training by the end of August 2021. For September, $10 million will be required to meet the demand for the additional 400 women group assessed, Madam Speaker. In October 2020, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, acting in partnership with the Office of the, acting in partnership with the, uh, with the, Office of the First Lady, and the World Food Program, launch a project to reduce the negative impact of gender-related factors on women working in the fisheries value chain. We expect this partnership to grow useful. Turning to another intervention, the ministry provided $200,000 support to 80 vulnerable families and 40 vulnerable elderly persons under the Family Strengthening Program. These efforts targets sustainable solutions within the sector. Finally, guided by the government's commitment to the concept of inclusiveness, the ministry tabled a bill on disability here in June 2020. It was enacted this year to provide a legal basis for all future government policies and programs to take cognizance of the unique need of different able persons. Environment, climate change, and natural 
resources that I'll speak. Concentrating on the significant development in this sector, I am pleased to report that the construction work of the ONVG Soma and Brickheimer Power Substations Project are progressing very well. Turning to the environment this year, the government distributed 350,000 polypods and seeds of assorted indigenous tree species to the central nurseries nationwide for breeding. The tree growing project is part of my government's policy to promote an eco-friendly environment. Among other initiatives, through the large-scale ecosystem-based adaptation project, the sector planted 4,000 hectares of degraded agricultural land, supported 40 school orchards, engaged in enrichment, planting in community forests, and embarked on mangrove restoration in CRR and LRR. On legislation, the National Environment Agency finalized the revised National Environment Management Act, the Waste Management Bill, and the Hazardous Chemicals and Pesticides Management Bill, all within the year. To conclude, I hope that the ongoing Global Climate Change Alliance project, funded by the European Union, will strengthen the sector's performance. Youth and Sports. Madam Speaker, Honourable Members, to effectively and efficiently promote youth and sports development, the youth and sports sector is reviewing some of their sector policies. These include the national sports policy and various frameworks of the satellite institutions. Among them is a draft five-year strategic plan 2020-2024 for sports development. In line with the development of the country's human resource base, 3,724 young persons have benefited from skills training. Some of them have already earned skills in construction and related areas. The ministry portfolio profile 1,000 youths for possible financing support. These achievements are as a result of the partnership bill with NEDI, PIA and the NYSS. Taking cue from the decentralization policy for youth empowerment, the Youth and Sports Ministry signed a contract to establish agro-food centers and build nine stadiums, a bakery and an auto mechanic center this year. Meanwhile, the National Youth Service Scheme is actively engaging and equipping our youth with livelihood skills in various work of life. Unfortunately, the proposed Youth National Service is on hold due to the pandemic. Despite the setback, despite this setback, the National Youth Council was able to facilitate for over 25,000 youth access to financing, employment, or economic development opportunities offered by YEP and TECIFI partners. To complement this, the Council is mapping and profiling 172 youth organizations into thematic areas for better coordination and facilitation. I must add that over 3,000 youth and school benefited from migration information and cancer MIC activities. This includes training of school peer education clubs, peer educators and teacher coordinators on migration and MIC. Madam Speaker, the Gambia is doing very well in various international sport competitions such as football, athletics, volleyball and boxing. For the first time, the nation looks forward to participating in the 2022 CAF tournament and we do so with enthusiasm and hope. We congratulate all those who raised the Gambian flag high in recent years, including the participants in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games.
foreign affairs, Madam Speaker. At the bilateral level, engagement with countries in the ECOWAS sub-region and beyond, as well as with our development partners globally, are developing very well. To cite examples, my government continues to have strong ties with the countries in the Middle East and the Gulf. The, the United Arab Emirates, for instance, donated substantial medical items for the fight against COVID-19. Like many other countries, relations between the Gambia and Turkey remain solid and beneficial. We maintain a healthy development cooperation agreement and have signed protocol on the exchange of land plots for diplomatic missions. I have noticed that an honourable member has been raising his, um, his constituency tab on a point of order, which is a parliamentary procedure that I have to listen to him. Can I please? Honourable Speaker, on which authority? Sorry, no, 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 please. What, uh, on which authority, Honourable Speaker? No, no, please. No, no. Let us Can we please cite the authority? Please, let us exercise the problem. Let me cite the authority of the test. Please, let us exercise the problem. He has to be heard. If I did not have the authority, I would not have exercised it. Period. Please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm rising on post 17 head. Clapping salute the appointment in the chamber. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, it's not clapping. I'm not going to tell you it's not clapping. Honorable Speaker, in the chamber, it's not clapping. We are not clapping. Order, order, order. Please, can we exercise the forum? Please, can we all exercise the forum? We are not clapping. 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 We are We are not clapping. We are We are not 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 Gazette, 
the registration and nursery regulation and the food fortification regulation. It also drafted two regulations on food packaging and alcohol. Last year, in collaboration with the Department of Community Development, the Director of Social Welfare and the National Social, Social Protection Secretariat began implementing the 31 million US dollars social safety net project. The project targets very poor persons in the West Coast, North Bank, Central River, Upper River, and Lower River regions. One of the components of the project, NAFA, provide cash transfers of $1,500 each to about 15,600 poor households for 18 months. As part of government efforts to mitigate the impact of the pandemic, 78,359 households in 30 districts received support with a double round of $3,000 cash transfers covering the National Disaster Management Agency, LDNA, under the Office of the Vice President, continues to engage in providing relief support to households affected by the pandemic in various regions. Regarding disaster, during the reporting period, some victims in the country received support in the form of cars, food, and non-food items. Honorable members, the Validated National Nutrition Policy 2018 2025 and the draft nutrition bill are scheduled for submission to cabinet and the National Assembly respectively for approval and enactment. Aside from this, the national population policy will be revised this year, 2021. On civil service reform, the personal management of its PMO aim to maintain an efficient and duly responsive public sector. In this respect, cabinet has approved the pay and grading review report. The objective of the review is to overhaul the current pay and grading structure of the civil service. PMO has designed a new civil service grading system and a pay and incentive policy to establish among other things a realistic minimum monthly salary for civil servants. To repeal the 1950 Pension Act, a new pension bill is before the National Assembly. When enacted, it will address all issues on pension. Importantly also, PMO is working on reintroducing a performance management system in the civil service. Other areas in the civil service, the reform includes conducting financial reviews to streamline and rationalize the mandates of MDS. Agriculture, Madam State. The government vision is to increase food and nutrition security while enhancing economic growth through the agriculture sector. The Ministry of Agriculture strives, therefore, to increase productivity based on the sustainable use and management of our natural resources. To achieve this, the Agricultural Transformation Program, ATP, has been structured around production and productivity, promotion of value chains, market competitiveness, and youth employment in agriculture. To increase production and support the farming community during the 2020 cropping season, 36,489 bags of fertilizer, 3,751 bags of improved rice varieties, 2,358 bags of grams, 727 bags of maize, 11 bags of film they are procured and made available to our farmers. In preparation for this cropping season, the Ministry of Agriculture through GGC procured a consignment of 20,000 metric tons of fertilizer and delivered it in March 2021. I am proud to say that Government also distributed farm implements to farmers to reduce unnecessary hardware and boost production and productivity. The items included power tillers, tracers, and milling and pumping machines. For use this farming season, 50 tractors were distributed 
Listen. <coughs> to develop the agricultural value chain and marketing promotion, the ATP will continue to promote mechanization by supplying land preparation, seeding, and weeding machines. Implementing the project will upgrade and upscale rice processing by introducing an integrated rice for boiling and milling machines through public private partners. The, the ATP will promote small scale processing at the level of the farmers. Training small scale processors will expose them to good processing practices for product safety and quality assurance, besides investments in expanding irrigation facilities. Government will continue to invest in mechanized harvesting methods to stimulate mechanical tracing and reduce the workload on women. Rightly too, the sector put due emphasis on supporting medium-scale businesses, processing facilities, strengthening public and private sector veterinary service dealing and efficient management of resources. On the parallel development from its $100 million supplementary budget allocation. The agricultural sector spent $60 million on equipment. On the list, we are tracing and milling machines, power tinners, harvesters, and pumping machines for irrigation. Aside from this, drought animals were purchased and distributed to the farmers on demand. Specific to value chain financing, the program will expand margin grant forms using classroom structures such as credit union. Similarly, it is hoped that initiating at least five agricultural insurance schemes will make agricultural lending safe. Through PPP, the program will provide seed money for these schemes. On the other hand, the PPP will entrust the partner private sector insurance body with the management responsibilities. Besides, it will facilitate establishing an agricultural development bank that focuses on development financing for agricultural value chain. Tourism and culture, while I speak. The indication is that the tourism and culture sector contributes about 25% of the gross domestic product, GDP, and creates employment for about 200,000 jobs. Unfortunately, it is one of the hardest hit sectors as a result of travel restrictions. Overall, the estimated loss to the sector from January to June 2020 was about $6.7 billion. These figures have undoubtedly increased, noting that many establishments are still struggling to get back to full operations. In 2020, Gambia Tourism Board, GTB, recorded 89,232 arrivals. The figure marks a significant decline against the NDP target. In 2021, the arrival figure further decreased to 50,000. Consequently, the loss of revenue to GTB is high. As part of its support packages, the government gave the tourism sector a $100 million stimulus package. This year, the government will be the operating lansing for hotels and municipal rates. The GDP is not expecting any revenue from operational lansing in 2021. The National Center for Arts and Culture experienced similar setbacks during the year under review. The closing or scaling down of social events resulted in loss of revenue. Thus, it is necessary to develop the sector through innovative means. Defects for the speaker. The development of the national security policy. The national security strategy and the security sector reform strategy. By this sector, by this sector, is, is, by this sector, is a major step towards a landmark transformation of the security services. To reinforce this, the Ministry of Defense is developing a defense, a national defense policy. In like manner, the Gambia Armed Forces Act, which came into existence in 1984, 
and the terms and conditions of service for officers and soldiers developed in 1993 are all under review to meet the realities of the day, Madam Speaker. The Gambia Armed Forces, GAF, leadership demonstrated commendable solidarity with other sectors to tackle the pandemic. For example, the GAF, GAF, command attacked medical doctors and other essential personnel to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center of the Ministry of Health. Similarly, they provided logistical support and participated in various activities to control the spread of the pandemic. As part of the security sector reform process, we will continue to embark on more purposeful and realistic training programs for our armed forces. We have entrusted them with the security of the nation and we support them to the fullest. Transport, works, and infrastructure, Madam Speaker. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the transport, works, and infrastructure sector registered impressive results. By the end of 2020, government have achieved 100% completion of the 818 kilometer primary road network set in the NDP. This covers the north and south banks of the country. In addition, to a paved distance of 650 kilometers also, completed uh, 120 kilometers of the Lamin Koto Pasamas Road and the 48 kilometer road from Basse to Koyen. Complementing the Lamin Koto Pasamas Road is a secondary paved road of 13 kilometers connecting Yerobao to Basse. An other link to the Lamin Koto Pasamas Road is an 18 kilometer paved distance from Kellen Johnson to Added to the network of the Lamin Koto Pasamas project are two gravel feeder roads of about 20 kilometers. These comprise the Saratene Sarangai Road link and the Nyakoi Mbaikunda Daslami link. With the primary road network completed, the sector is engaging in constructing secondary and tertiary road links and bridges. Along the new Basse Poina Road, two new bridges at the Chamway and Sudu, 25 meters and 32 meters long, respectively, have been completed this year. In Basse, a 250 meter bridge and an order 170 meter bridge in Farroko have been completed. This 82 million US dollars project was financed through a grant from the government of the People's Republic of China. <laughs> Following the completion of the Sukuda Jambangeli Secondary Link Road of 13.5 kilometers, the government is constructing 108 kilometers of feeder roads to ease and expand access to economic and social facilities in various parts of rural Gambia. This project, funded through the EU Enoch Grant, has been completed. We have initiated major secondary paved roads on the North Bank, mainly using local resources and funding. Currently, works are in progress to construct 88 kilometers of paved roads in the Nyomi Akala area. <laughs> Accompanying this is an older set of roads totaling to 175 kilometers. The contract was awarded in January 2020 to be completed in 16 months. Madam Speaker, the construction of the Kian West Roads has commenced with 38 kilometers of paved roads. The execution period is 12 calendar months. Negotiations are underway for the contractor to continue with the remaining 46 kilometers in Kian. In the capital city of Banyu, the government reconstructed 14 kilometers of severely dilapidated roads and drains using local funds under the Banyu Rehabilitation Project. In a similar development, the government has secured funding from Saudi Fund for Development, SFD, equal to 50 million US dollars to construct 50 kilometer roads in the greater Banyu area. From the Kuwaiti Fund, Arab Economic Development. Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa 
OPEC Fund for International Development and Abu Dhabi Fund, government secured 83 million US dollars to upgrade the Baton Harden Highway into a dual carry of 22 kilometers. This stretches from Yunnan Junction to Sydney Court. The civil war will take 24 months. Contracts have been signed as well using local funds for the maintenance, rehabilitation, and reconstruction of selected roads in the Greater Banyan area. They include Barcote Corp Highway, Bruce Lee Phase 2 Access Road, Cardiffing Estate Access Road, and Coroni Garden Access Road. The estimated cost is $90 million. On building projects, the major rehabilitation and reconstruction works at the Banyan International Airport is now complete doubling the capacity of the main terminal building. The traffic control tower was renovated during the year and equipped with new communication facilities. Works are ongoing to construct a new VIP line. Additional building projects include construction of the governor's residence and offices in Kerala, both of which are progressing well and due for completion this year. There are ongoing construction works for markets in various parts of the country. Among them are the fire railway markets of Basay and Bikama and the Latikunda, Soma and Farafeli markets. Finally, the Ministry has developed a public building and facilities management bill and we submit it to this August Assembly for consideration. The bill proposes a new framework for the design construction operation and management of all government assets, both in the country and abroad. <laughs> Justice, Madam Speaker. My administration will never waver in upholding the principles of good governance, democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. <laughs> in this respect, with support from the UNDP, the Ministry of Justice succeeded in developing a strategic plan 2021-2025 and revised the 2013 Sexual Offences Act, the 1994 Evidence Act and the 2016 Legal Practitioners Act. In the same vein, the legislative reforms and transitional justice processes process commenced in 2017 resulted in the presentation of various bills to this August Assembly. These range from matters of crime, human rights, and freedom to amendments of discriminatory laws against women. We hope to have all pending bills enacted and implemented eventually. A disclosed earlier, consultation and dialogue are continuing to build consensus on a revised draft constitution. My government will provide support to this to happen amicably. On policy, the Minister of Justice now has a national human rights policy and action plan 2021-2025. The government ministries, departments and agencies will implement the action plan jointly with national and international agencies and partners. Externally, the Gambia signed and deposited the instrument of ratification for the Gambia's accession to the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization on trade marks otherwise known as the Banyan Protocol. It came into effect in May 2021. Hopefully, it will lead to more investments in the Gambia and boost revenue generation. Regarding registration of businesses and companies, the single window business registry registered a 21% drop in revenue from March and June 2020, compared to the previous year from January to August. 2021, 1,500 companies were registered compared to 1,340 during the same period. Despite the challenges, the SWBR managed to collect 17,946,700 from January to December 2020. Supported by the UNDP, the Ministry will review the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act 2005 this year to incorporate more progressive provision on dispute resolution. Focusing attention on legal aid, in 2020, the National Agency for Legal Aid Services 
tax to provide legal services across the country received a total of 486 cases. Out of this, 147 representing 30 percent of the cases were resolved. The remaining ones are ongoing. Madam Speaker, in January of this year, government extended the mandate of the two reconciliation and reparation commission by six months to enable the commission to complete and submit its report this year. Once the report is received, government will study it for appropriate action. Internationally, we have complied with all international obligations and, and as of this August Assembly that we will continue to respect our legal obligations. The Judiciary 5-year strategic plan launched in January 2021 provides a solid framework to promote an independent, effective and efficient justice system. We look forward to the forthcoming donor conference with UNDP assistance to secure funding for its implementation. Helps, Madam Speaker, focusing on the pandemic. The government has forced essential supplies and encouraged local production to meet part of the country's demand for them. As of now, my administration and our development partners have committed over $200 million on medical and non-medical supplies. As a result, the health sector was able to secure substantial face masks, gowns, goggles, IPC materials, ventilators, and other vital equipment for use countrywide, Madam Speaker. Neban Clinic and the sanatorium now operate as treatment centers for people infected by the coronavirus. Three other treatment centers, SM, Soma and Bansan, are in use. And the construction of eight orders in various parts of the country has started. These projects were supported mainly by the United Nations agencies. The Gambia received its first batch of COVAX vaccines in record time, and the vaccination campaign has been a success. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, donated by the government of the United States, is now being administered successfully across the country. Government plan to construct an emergency treatment center with 104 beds in Farah. It will have 20 fully equipped ICU rooms. The World Bank is supporting the construction works and will provide the equipment. The project is the first phase of a proposed teaching hospital in Farah with 1,500 beds and at least 17 faculties. The contracts for an order set of eight permanent treatment centers housing 40 beds have been awarded already. In this endeavor, we appreciate the support of the World Bank, SSHFC, UNFPA, and TAF Global. Honorable members, through the expanded program on immunization, the health sector is administering vaccinations against 12 preventable diseases. The government is working on mobilizing resources to secure about 2.5 million doses of vaccines for national coverage. Working with our partners, we intend to vaccine, vaccinate at least 60% of the population. As part of efforts to realize and implement the concept of primary health care, PHC, in the country, PHC has increased in few key villages from 722 to 942, marking an increase of 30%. In the new development, plans are at an advanced stage to establish a national community ambulancing service with an initial fleet of 70 ambulances. Complementing this is the plan to renovate 50 facilities and construct six new health centers and 13 new health posts. All this will contribute tremendously to strengthening our health system. Finally, finally, I thank the honourable members for approving the National Health Insurance Authority Bill table here some time ago. Department of Strategy, Policy and Delivery, Madam Speaker. 
with the support of UNDP and the, Depart the Department of Strategy Policy and lead with DSPD under my office, has made significant progress in building capacity and strengthening the much needed tools for improved analysis, information sharing, stakeholder engagement and training in the country. During the reporting period, the Department completed and circulated a comprehensive compilation of government policies to extend the reach for evidence-based policy development and implementation. The DSPD earlier this year launched a policy forum on research and policy development. As expected, the Department continues to monitor the implementation of the pilot projects within the MDS for timely service delivery. They are also coordinating and monitoring the performance of the President's flagship program for accelerated community development project reported here last year. Madam Speaker, the DSPD is coordinating government's response to the 2019 TIP report recommendations. The staff is working closely with the National Agency Against Trafficking in Persons and the National Task Force on Trafficking in Persons, TIP. In this respect, I am happy to report that the upgrading of the Gambia from Tier 2 watch list status in 2020 TIP report resulted in the country's reselection for the Millennium Challenge Corporation Threshold Program in December 2020. Madam Speaker, the SPD is also implementing an Open Government Initiative, OGI Hour, to promote regular communication and enhance dialogue at the central and local levels. The initiative seek to foster transparency and accountability in public policy. This is supported by the UN Peace Building Fund to enhance private sector participation in national development. Our Excellency the Vice President and the DSPD continue to support the Ministry of Trade's reforms to improve ease of doing business in the Gambia. Thus far, the key milestones include providing credit rating at the Central Bank of the Gambia bringing back the single business registry and creating a dedicated commercial court. Concluding remarks. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the National Assembly, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, as this address shows, my government has registered significant successes over the years. On the other hand, the issues raised in the address demonstrate clearly that the tasks at hand are many and quite complex. Addressing them effectively requires unity, peace, stability, and the desire and will to promote and defend the nation's cause. Without the pandemic, our rate of development and achievement levels would have been much better. But as good citizens and true Democrats, we should appropriately and honorably respond to challenges by remaining focused, continuing to manage our affairs, and move on on the top. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, the national discourse on the country's political evolution has been a significant source of divergence. The executive acknowledges its importance and appreciates the various stands of social life, political standpoints, governance structures, and development approaches fed into it. With reference to this, it is worth emphasizing that my administration's performance needs to be examined within the context of 2016 with due commitment given to the state of the Gambian economy at the time. The socio-political divisions, the poverty levels, the disparities, the high unemployment rate, the dysfunctional government machinery and systems, and the inappropriate use of state resources. The future is much brighter today because of the opportunities created from 2017 to date. Now we can forge ahead with insightful lessons from the past and the present. These are tangible resources to build upon for consolidation and expansion 
to cite a few examples. This read from the substantial gains made in the energy supply and infrastructure development to the achievements recorded in the critical components of institutional strengthening and the reforms across all sectors, transition of justice, education and training, civil liberties, media freedom, health and agriculture development. Fortunately, our vision is clear and we have well-defined goals for future action. I will personally continue to appeal to the people's sense of civic responsibility as genuine patriotic citizens committed to democratic principles and values to give the nation their utmost. I hope for that we engage in constructive participation in all national and community issues and events. Aside from this, let us engage in constructive dialogue and discharge our civic and social responsibilities delegated. While we individually have the freedom and right to define and express the concepts that inform our philosophies, we must be alive to other people's ideas and the values that cut across social life, religious conviction, and peaceful coexistence. Democracy guarantees voice and participation to each citizen, but it does so with conditions. Universally, multi-party democracy, which our Constitution seeks to uphold, is derived from legitimacy as defined by the law. Thus, the law must guide our actions. Unfortunately, we have noticed and experienced in some instances, unjust and deliberate actions that are anti-democratic, yet they are committed in the name of democracy. As human beings, it is contrary to good citizenship to disregard our sense of justice and act on impulse, grudge, hate, revenge, or envy in crime and all the negative tendencies that undermine progress and development for the people. In this context, we must appreciate the work of every citizen, honor the level of every worker, and reward everyone in due course. As Gambians, we must be sensitive to the pain, sorrows, and desires of those around us and work towards making life easy and comfortable for every one of us. Concern for the welfare of all is the essence of inclusive development and progress in a democracy. I am happy that together we supported and empathized with the victims of the 7th July windstorm. This is the true Gambian spirit. Let our citizenship rise, blood and social ties, religious faith, goodwill and love to fa for, for family and nation unite us. Indeed, our common values should oblige us to work together in the best interest of the country. Crucially, all these need to be understood and put into practice in accordance with the Constitution and the laws and principles that govern our institutions. For government, the legal frameworks and operational arrangements of our institutions will continue to condition the content of our national agenda and plan. Madam Speaker, in the face of COVID-19 pandemic, my government has continued to show character, and so have the people. Let us sustain this spirit. As we prepare for the December presidential election, it rests on all categories of leaders and influential parties, especially those belonging to the political parties, to plead peace and stability for an order cycle of free, fair, and transparent elections. Let the Gambian citizens be allowed to vote 
for the candidates of their choice with a praise of I ask the security personnel to be more vigilant than ever and ensure that the rule of law prevails. It is a duty of everyone to fight the criminals in the country and a collective responsibility to, step, to stop every form of injustice. Honorable Speaker, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank everyone for supporting my government, especially when it matters most. This includes our partners who have stood by us as we pass through the advancement of our dear country. In particular, I thank every Ghanaian citizen, either living in the country or the diaspora, and every resident of the country for making this transition period a very successful one. The descending voices in the democracy contribute to success if taken into consideration for positive action. This has helped me immensely as a statesman and democrat, so I acknowledge every citizen's positive contribution to the nation. Madam Speaker, to you and all honorable members of this August Assembly, I sincerely express my appreciation and gratitude to the National Assembly you made many decisions and approved numerous bills. The budget requests granted have contributed remarkably to the multiple projects my administration has implemented successfully as well as those in progress. Thank you very much indeed. I renew my promise to the people of this beloved land and the international community to commit myself to the principles of democracy, good governance and the rule of law within the framework of serving my people and my country selflessly and devotedly. In this regard, I ask for your continued support and cooperation. To conclude, I thank you all for your attention and pray that the Almighty God continues to bless our efforts, protect us, and grant us peace and stability. I thank you.
reflect and relate what the policy statement already delivered. The address will also give us an opportunity to reflect on our achievements and challenges we face as a nation that sincerely demand for national unity, cohesion, peace, and stability for the betterment and progress of our dear country. As the people's representatives, we are charged to commit ourselves to ensure that government policies and programs as outlined are thoroughly scrutinized and debated upon with due diligence. Thus, it is important for us to have a clear understanding of the government's policies, development programs, and aspirations. In a similar way, Your Excellency, the legislator wishes to recognize in high esteem the efforts of the executive once more in introducing the National Service Bill under a special procedure to ensure it was passed with experience. This is a testament of the executive's commitment and goodwill in strengthening the institution of parliament for the general good of democratic governance. And on that note, I would once more express thanks and appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Republic, for this year's State of the Nation address, and in the same way, express thanks and gratitude to my Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, my Lord, the Chief Justice and Justices of the Superior Courts, Honorable Ministers, the Excellencies, former Vice Presidents of the Republic, Honorable former Speakers of the National Assembly, Your Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Service Chiefs, the Lord Mayors of Banjo and Kalifi Municipality, senior government officials here and present, regional chief executive officers, traditional leaders, venerable religious leaders, members of the press, and all distinguished invited guests for gracing this solemn occasion in the calendar year of the National Assembly. And in addition, on behalf of both sides of this public assembly, I wish to register our thanks to the entire country for the support and collaboration in our quality drive for nation building. To my honorable colleagues of the National Assembly, I want to be agree national development is an enormous task. And as a legislature, our role is very paramount. Thus, I pray that we always be guided in our deliberations by justice and conscience towards the common good. May I also thank all honorable members, the Office of the Clerk, the Task Force, and all those who in their various ways contributed immensely to making this day a success. I pray that Allah the Almighty bless and guide all of us. And on that note, may I want to put the question to adjourn the assembly until Monday, the 13th of September, 2021. However, I wish to request that all guests remain seated to allow His Excellency, the President and the Vice President and Honorable Ministers to take leave of the chambers first. And I thank you all. And on that note, I will now put the question, be it resolved that this August assembly do stand at job till Monday the 13th of September 2021. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. The assembly now stands at job till Monday the 13th of September 2021 at 10 a.m. from. I thank you all for your kind attention. Please can we allow us excellence. My husband.
it has been and the president has come and has delivered what he said and then we look forward to the presentation. Uh, that thing that you are speaking in the language, any of them. Uh, so we look forward to it. You have a full team. and clarifications of the Okay. All the best, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marin Jibera, Hanim Birek, uh, Alia Jaloko, uh, Walen Dr. Sida Jogti, and uh, Alia Mweloko, uh, President of the Minister of the New Sector of the Minister of the Government I follow for now. Co, now that we are progress, the our government la progress the COVID-19 pandemic here affect bankele, and to an extent of most of the process many along co wole nyanta kake wala ala progressive fungo ni adjust the demanding. So ni na kito kute mi a president no ya follow. I held male, I education ma. I um, youth and sports sector ma minyalanko I think ha uh, wole sectors minyalanko to le gena important na na ta am fenkola a karo ala government la karo I have follow for na ko um ala government young people all ma ko minyalanko a itata studies la abroad a dolbe a university of the gambia ibela degrees ke kan I think that the president, His Excellency President, His Excellency President Adam Baroya, will be here at the National Assembly. Ali Ajelo co signing a banta ayala lifta kata gambi kata state house. So I think that the president will be here in Jan. Allah Baraka Bay. Bombarding us with their hands. So, don't you think this in it at that instant was wrong? 
you know, it's not wrong. It's very correct because the law has to be know, uh, 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 respected at all costs at, at any time. You cannot say today I will respect the law, tomorrow I will not respect it. That's not correct. So what I have done is quite in order. I will just do my job as a man, and I'm just quite you know, uh, uh, cognizant of the standing order and of the constitution. If you violate the standing order of the house, the alarm bell will be rang. So when you say this and it happens to be bombarded, how do you see this? Is it as a reason of different or as a reason of telling you that, hey, we will do it here is our Allah, good reading. Uh, the mighty UDP will show the polls with a landslide victory. Good reading. With a very big margin. Good reading, inshallah. I have no doubt in that. That will happen, inshallah. I shall provide a little bit of a monthly Monday. Do you have a rest for the family? Do you have a car? Do you have a rest for the family? 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 The Constitution and the Standing Orders. Okay, Standing Order Benjamin. What you want? You can raise your tag. 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 Bangko lah kita ba, anggib dia buang labu ko, mengkah sambak kanda. Ni aje biji, orang kadib dia buang makuk kita betul ni ame. Kau nak terang seluruh jurang, ngalun yang dah muni kela, ngalun muni manja meng kela. Saya ni bukan meng kah manja, dia betul meng kah lanyang tu long. Ayat dua long, ayat kita buang jurang kita flow imbi long. Entah dia mana lekang buku kau buka tak pun, mana biji. So orang yang kau bulu kosoh, istablo kos nol. Kami close seventeen hek. Ini tablo kos nol tenten tenten tenten. Bayi, ini tablo kos nol. Rau rau rau. Hanya ko, mana tahu bentuknya. Najwa ko final. Presiden nanti lupa state of the nation address ke. 
uh, indicated in the Constitution, in Section 77 of the Constitution. Bitayal speech. Masala, a bia diamudal. Imagine a diamond block on the same with a sogonal. Ming Alake, Nakarang, Najibe, Tenelung, and in Tragalung, Meme Yang, Nana Wanyan Molia, Ming Alake, Mira Nakarang, Polin Nakarang, Meme Yang and Nawanya Banko Molia. Fire Kanyam Lebang, Fama Kanyam Bank, and the Menga Manyakela, who serve with Banko Molia, Alabu Lalu, who serve with Banko Mola, and in Kalafa have no fun again. Bobby Kila Ming Alake, Timmy Menkana, and in Tlato, inshallah. Alors, nous devons condamner la bataille, la démocratie. Nous devons condamner la bataille. 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 Je Uh, you know, the fifth time to uh, appear at the National Assembly to, you know, uh, 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 I found a call for many alonko wala bala government. Uh, I seek to solve for many alonko uh, wolfanaye a uh, call to the towards um, the national development. Bari ako ay ajero ko momo bedo ko ni seek to solve for give achievement okay can towards the national development. So you can take a call to many alonko important tabaka and uh, communication technology the sector so far me along for um, access to information bill a uh, pro general so yela um, um, freedom most of the um, access to information bill uh, for a tayo was signed uh, out when I get the quality me along for I have a journey I have fully for now for a nanata a la um, government la karo sutu muso la semben tu yala a la government the millions ya mas penanana tan na fala karo la and stuff Abang Hanim Birat Mahanda Rabu Dosa Tajam Babla La Afatu Ya Diamu Alim. Ini nyo tahawal President Adam Barasi National Assembly. Ini gisman ni baru ni setan. Bila lah teki moy kan, hamna ane jero tu introduce. Pas kini baru baru hamna ane kosid dekabe. So ne ni jige UDP nyo NPP. Abok ane sin bayi mila iway, dama ane bayi mila we. Naga de. Jamal Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Let me introduce Boba to our beautiful viewers. Maybe it's good. I'm not your hamne hit na time when it comes in first time, but your mom platform is a platform. Yes, all of you be the problem. I don't know what I can do. Yeah, we can do in English. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell our beautiful viewers who you are? Very good. Sorry for that. Not to not try to belittle the world of listeners. My world is not good. Yeah, world is not good. And I'm so much happy. If I want to talk in world, I'm a jumble of everything. But obviously, I am Honorable Judge Sekuba. I'm the National Assembly member for Pabu Simbala. So that's the introduction. Uh, Honorable, um, today we have seen uh, a big action in the, um, uh, what is it called, in the National Assembly. Uh, I have been zooming and my cameras have been showing you uh, when the United Democratic Party um, uh, member just uh, raised his cap to say that clapping is not allowed at the assembly. And we've seen you demonstrate, uh, you know, we want to know what happened. Okay, actually, why, what I was trying to, not, I'm not rea I was not reacting to the member's point, yes. but I was reacting to the speaker. Uh, what the member did was right, it's according, it's, uh, according to the law. Uh, in the National Assembly, clapping is not allowed, but members are not allowed to clap. This is the standard one. Members are not allowed to clap, but we have strangers. Who doesn't know the rules of the National Assembly? So if they clap, 
and then he raised that, uh, uh, that uh, motion, that order, the speaker has to put him right for him to understand. That's one. That's why I was calling on the speaker to say, you are the cause of everything. Two, the top statement is talking. The order has no benefit, no impact. No impact. No impact on the process, president. So you, you bring an order of, of something that has impact on the process, on the proceeding of the National Assembly. So order there doesn't have any impact. So the member just feel that, okay, let me, because I have the mandate, I have the power in the standing order, let me just bring this to distract. That's why I was telling this speaker, no use to be on top of things, try to talk to the member to understand. And again, let them also understand that the order doesn't have any impact on what is going on. And the top state man is talking. According to the law, we don't have anything because, yes, he has the power, but according to the law, he doesn't, we don't have, have to say anything after the statement. If at all we had the power, we would have asked the president to sit down and we debate in his presence. But the law says the president delivers his statement and go. The next day we come. If he cannot come, he will be invited by the president. So, you see, when you have the law, I want people to understand. When you have the law, but you also have to look at the situation. When and how to implement that, to, not to create commotion. So he, I know intentionally it was done for him to create commotion. That was, that's why I was reacting to the speaker that he was not on top of issues. He should be able to control and inculcate discipline procedures into the members. Um, but it surprised a lot of people, especially uh, the diplomats that were sitting and um, seeing uh, such reactions. And this is parliamentary procedures. Parliament is just like that. You know, Gambia, we try to bring our this culture into the parliament. Parliament is a different culture. Parliament, obviously, let me tell you this, you have the power, you have the power on I mean, Monday to distract your opening. You know that the member who raised that order is an opening to the president. So he does it intentionally to distract. So we, we who feel and we are learning and getting from, from the president's statement, we have to re react to that so that we can allow the president to go. It's just parliamentary procedure. I don't think the diplomats that, are, that follow international parliament processes will not feel any disappointment yeah, but, but, in the process. But, but, but uh, you know, at some point you have been uh, seeing anything that the president say, people have been interrupting, especially in NAM, you know, um, just, um, uh, what is it called, you know, uh, just putting their hands on the table and it becomes an ridiculous thing without this power. And people were questioning, um, is it a fight between the United Democratic Party and the NDP? No, it's not a fight. There is no MPP in it. I'm not MPP. I'm independent. There is no fight. This is just to tell so the, each other that everybody has a right in the parliament. If something happens and you want to object, you bring your order. If something happens and you want to support, you knock the table. And then there is no law that says the limit of building the table. You are not MPP. You are independent. But here we are seeing you in your very own color that is the gray that stands for the NPP. No, this is a, this is a wrong definition. Ah. The gray was here before NPP. Ah. If I thought I wear something that has NPP on it, ah. that's it. Because legally in the parliament, I don't represent NPP here. I will be a supporter. But I'm also made it very clear, I'm a supporter to the president. And the president is an independent party. When I go out of the parliament, I am NPP. But in the chambers, I am independent. So this color doesn't signify. This color you, you get said, um, you know, the president was with it, and then it's obvious that his opponent uh, we are against him. That is why uh, you have to just. Uh, I support the president. I support the president. My support the president. <laughs> I support the president. I support the president, and I believe he was giving a very good statement. The speech said we should find them guys are living to it. Because I was listening attentively. You may show where you have points to advise the president. That's my job. After his statement, I will go through it again and talk to the president to advise me of the sort of things that he said are not the realities on the ground. Things that is very say, but they are not to the interest, best interest of the people. Things that people are expecting and they are not being catered for. I will talk about those ones. So my supporting the president has no connection and my wearing this way has no connection. It's probably just sympathy to, to the MPP. <laughs> Very good. You see, this is human nature. 
Yeah. In 2017, when you interviewed me, I was going to talk a lot. Even with my qualification from outside, I have been talking to the public. When you interview me, it might not be perfect answer. So obviously, I am very happy that you picked that one. That's a good point. Because we expect him to move from a state to another state positively. And he has done that. The three years ago, or two years ago speech, and this year's speech is different. He speaks eloquently, and then at a speech that everybody can catch up. Even if you are sleeping, you can catch up and understand what he's saying. So, it is human nature that has a word that slips the tongue, and that is obvious to everybody. So, English is not a model, model language. There are some words that slips the tongue. But those ones are not anyone. Really what is more important is the information that he has given to you. And I'm obviously, his way of reading and the information that he has given, he has obviously improved. It is now called the NTP um, doing their work collation with um, um, APRC. I'm in for that. Very well, I'm in for it. I'm in for NTP, APRC. Uh, but this doubt so many people because uh, when President Adam Barrow um, scanned it for us, he said uh, Gambia was not free, uh, Gambia uh, we have been going through so many struggles through the APRs and you know we are talking about the same APRs with no changes. Do you think uh, this is the right thing for uh, NPP to do? Very good. Uh, when you are a student, I will take examples from the class. When I was a teacher, if I give exam or assessment to a student, and he fails. I don't define the student as a failure. I give him a second class. So all what have happened, they are Gambians. I am so they have learned and to be given a second chance is so important. Honorable uh, Sebu, I think here we're talking about debt. And this is not me saying it. People are saying, um, you know, Jamie used to kill, he's a killer, he do A, B, C, and D. So how can you give second chance? People don't want this needs to be clear. MPP is not making any coalition with Jammu. MPP is making coalition with APRC. Uh, but I Excuse mean, me. I mean, the interests of Jammu will be there. No, the interests of Jammu will be there. Because Jammu is the founder and was the leader of APRC. But to be clear, MPP doesn't have any agreement with Jammu. In the agreement, the issue of Jammu yes, will be there. And then, that's obvious. Because everybody body will want to say that they will the agreement the LPP have, the coalition, is with APRC, and all of the, the key that you are thinking about, the, the executive or the members of APRC, nobody is being mentioned at TRC. Tell me, is Kawa Kutomandera called at TRC? It was done by the government, it was done by the security, and a section of the security, those are the jungles, where are they? So the APRC, does, they are handled totally clean. Fakta Kawabaka has never been called to the Commission of Enquiries, no to TRC, neither of these members. So they are clean and they are going to They have the, they want to maintain their position and they have the right to do it. So let me be very clear to people. We are not making any coalition with the jungles. We are not making any coalition with those that kill. We are making coalition with decent gentlemen who have the right to be part of any group. What do you mean? What is the trust? What is the trust and the daily trust here? Let's withdraw the word selfish. In national development, there is no selfish. Even you will have no, there is no selfish thing there. Your, your interest, my interest come together. So if I don't have my interest, come up, we put together to call national development. This is just like to you know black men for peace and to say service in service. There is no service interest in this country. Everybody is fighting for political for national interest. You see, to say transitional, the president has mentioned it. Look at this before this statement. He thanked the people for responding to him, giving him the honor and the power for him to rule for four years, the five years of as transition. So it is you at, at your own level who say, okay, this is not transitional. What is not transitional there? The president is still not MPP. President was an independent coalition president. Come December 5th, when he is going to be elected, that's the time he's going to be the president. Yes, uh, our final question for you before you go. A lot of people believe that Yaya Yame and APRC people are smarter than the MPP people. That is what Gambians mean, not from me. And they say if this coalition happened to uh, become a reality, uh, 
ignore_time_segment_in_scoring so, Gambia, today we are President Barros Pijam. Today we are going to comment. Today we are going to comment. Today we are going to see any feedback or not. We are going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. But I believe that President Barros, at his own time, definitely speak to him. We are going to talk about a lot of improvement. We are going to talk about it. Tapi dalam sektor itu banyak banyak banyak. So kami lihat lagi ni lawan Fatu Samba Sibir National Assembly. If you watching, you watching the Gambian Talents TV live and direct. This is what we call the people's power. We would always bring you such coverage, national coverage, at your doorstep. So feel free to follow the Gambian Talents TV where we will bring you every program that is happening in the country, outside the country that we feel that you would benefit from. So stay tuned with Gambian Talents TV as we bring you more programs, live coverage. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. I'm going to talk to Fatou. I'm going to talk to Fatou Yafo Yami, and I'm going to talk to the National Assembly of the State of the 
perspective of the nation address the Nana to hold the Minyalo Bola sector solely all the ranging from health, folk attack to sports. I call for the Minyalo Bola, it's very much impressive, but those are my affiliates. I call for the Minyalo Bola, I call for the Canada, it's not the reality Minyalo Bola, the ground. So be my name is the time to be at the National Assembly until we come in your way next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Bukan waringe sin million sejupa eh kungangar am pikirati corona virus. Corona virus kau kau sumutkan manje baju tani, baju tani ne, baju tani faham, baju tani ne, baju tas tek. Buk eh kau kau sumutkan manje bukan nak tu kugare. Bukan baju ke baris sumu yang nanti ada budik sumut kat corona virus. Tapi tentu menya di baju pikirati yang kau nampak vaksin yang manje. Anu sen awal nampur mana jangan ayok bangun nampak kau fangafal kau sumut kat covid nineteen.